next one question. This comes in about a mortgage refi in excess of DTI. DTI is debt to income ratio. Debt to income ratio is the amount of debt that you have per month that's mortgage, that's monthlies of the co-op, that's a car loan, student loans, uh, anything that is an installment payment. Installment payment is installment debt is a little bit different than revolving debt. Revolving debt means that every single month you pay it off, say it's $500, you pay it off. But installment debt means that you have a balance, say a car, and you're paying it down each month. So <clears throat> the debt to income ratio, they're saying they have a mortgage at the moment. Can the co-op board prevent me from mortgaging my shares in a loan that would cause, cause that was my nice New York accent, <laughs> cause my debt to income ratio to be in excess of the allowable figure of 25%. So in other words, what they're saying is that they're gonna refi their mortgage, bumping up their monthlies, and it's gonna go above the debt to income ratio. The debt to income ratio, by the way, they're saying allowable figure. This isn't hard in stone. You know, not every co-op is, it, there's a agreed upon number, but there's nothing in the bylaws or there's nothing in the minutes that say you need, to, well, unless they do, I don't know. I haven't heard of a co-op that has definitively come back and said, you need to be below 25%. You need to be below 20%. In other words, the amount of debt that you have going out, as opposed to the amount of income that you have coming in, gross income the amount of debt going out cannot exceed 25% of the amount of gross income that you have coming in. Kind of a complicated subject, but in short is yes, the co-op can deny that. In other words, when you go to refi, the co-op's gonna see that your monthlies are propping up because you're either borrowing money or the interest rate is too high or you're gonna go out and, and buy something else, is they're now gonna see that your monthlies are gonna go up. So yes, the co-op can deny that. I do not recommend anything that would be sneaky. The co-op finds every, about everything, and <clears throat> the reason the co-op has shares, and the reason they have a lease, so this is in short what a co-op is. A co-op co is a corporation that all the shareholders receive stock in the corporation. So the building is a corporation, and each person is a shareholder, and they receive shares, and they also get a, something called a stock, which is I own these shares, and a lease. And the lease essentially is them allowed to actually live there. That lease is, is the permission for them to actually live there. The shares is that they own this percentage of the building and then the, the lease is actually allowing them to live there. And I know I just said that twice, but that's the important thing is that you can still own the space, but the co-op, and I've heard this, revokes your shares and actually uh, revokes your lease. So you can't actually live there. So they'll revoke the lease. You have to move out legally. You still own the space because you have the shares, the, the percentage in the corporation. In other words, you still own that space, that apartment, not physically own it because that's not, it's not real property legally, but you can't actually live there. And I've seen that done because uh, the, the example that I always bring up is the parents were buying a home and they said it was a second home and then their, their child moved in. And then the co-op got wind of this and they said, who's this kid living in the apartment? We thought it was a second home and they revoked the lease and then the parents and no one could actually live there because they, they weren't allowed, they didn't have the lease to live there, so they're forced to sell. And they're forced to sell actually at a loss because of all the closing costs. It was right after they bought, and then they had to incur the broker's compensation. So it's a big mess. So I do not recommend you actually doing this. You, uh, someone actually uh, mentions. I do not recommend that you actually do this because it would just be a complete mess and the co-op's going to find out about it and they could revoke the lease, which means that you own the shares, but then you have to move out and then you have to sell the apartment and it's just something you don't want to get involved in. So no, you should not do that. And it, just to go back to the 25% figure, the debt to income ratio is that's just a, an arbitrary number and it could change co-op to co-op. It, it does change co-op to co-op and it changed co-op board to co-op board. In other words, year over year when you have new elections, one co-op board could say 29%, the other one could say 25%, the year after that it could be 23 or 20. It, it depends, there's nothing hard and fast. But if there's an accepted amount for decades, then yeah, it's like if you have above 25%, they're not gonna allow you to refinance, You're not gonna allow, they're not gonna allow you to buy into the building. So 
Valid question, unbelievable question. No, you cannot do that because the cop's going to revoke your lease and I would not do anything that's illegal or sneaky or lie to them. So that's my answer. If you have any questions, reply to the comments in the comments section below. And as well is subscribe to the YouTube videos and follow us on Instagram. Those are our two favorite social media networks. And as always, hope you have an awesome day.